If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Welcome to the Voice of Revival, bringing you dynamic insights on revival for today's generation, discussing biblical truths and how they relate to the church, prophecy, and current events. The heart of this program is to call God's people to repentance and proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We are watchmen sounding the alarm. Broadcasting revival for the church, awakening for the nations, and restoration for the world. Welcome to the Voice of Revival radio show. This is Isaac with thevoiceofrevival.org. Also, you can go back and look at our previous blogs that are talking about that there's a rude awakening before a great awakening, talking about the book of Jonah. Then we also talked about the invasion of a Holy Spirit awakening. And I believe the Spirit of the Lord is telling the prophets, He's telling the watchmen that there is a great holy invasion coming as we see wickedness rising on the earth as we see darkness flooding the earth god is bringing the message of awakening the message of revival and that is the clarion call to repentance everyone's talking about a great awakening coming but we got to understand one thing it's not going to happen until we repent until we get right with god until we come to the understanding that without repentance there is no salvation. Repentance is the gateway to the kingdom of heaven. Repentance. We're going to be talking about preparing the way to metanoia. We want to see transformation, then we must repent. See, we want the signs and wonders and the power of the Holy Spirit to be manifested, miracles and healings, but we don't want to repent. You see, without repentance, these things won't come. See, the greatest holy visitation is coming to the earth. But it's going to come with a rude awakening to repentance. Repentance will lead to forgiveness, to prepare the way of holiness, to release the outpouring of the latter rain upon the earth, the awakening to the Holy Spirit. But why hasn't this current generation not seen revival? First of all, the church refuses to repent. It's not popular to preach on repentance. Without repentance, there's no forgiveness of sin. And without forgiveness of sins, There is no freedom, we are dead to sin, and there's no way out but coming back, return back to God. That was the word that the prophets brought constantly to the children of Israel. Why? Because they refused to turn back to God. They refused to repent. They thought that they were right with God and they had no need of repentance. See, revival has become a catchword phrase. It's used in the secular world and the church has mistaken it for something else. When God calls for repentance and we refuse, then judgment comes next. Judgment always begins in the church. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 18. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 18. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Voice of Revival. This is Isaac Gabriel, your host. We're talking about preparing the way for awakening. Preparing the way through metanoia. Repentance. Ooh, that big word nobody likes to talk about. Without that. There will be no awakening. Without that, there will be no deliverance, and God will not change this land, change America, until we repent. And remember that repentance begins in the house of God. 1 Peter chapter 4, let's start in verse 17. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. For if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? If we go to Acts chapter 17, verse 20, truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. 
See, repentance is not just for the church. Repentance is for the world. But first, repentance has to come to the church. You see, true repentance is is creating a spirit of contrition. Contrition is brokenness. Brokenness to be bent, to abhor sin, to hate sin. If we don't get to that point, then there will be no holiness. The holiness of God, the presence of God, the glory of God is where we want to get to because then we're going to see regions, we're going to see nations, we're going to see cities, we're going to see the globe awakened to the glory of God, the presence, the awesome wonder of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So that's what we're talking about today, preparing the way for awakening. Now, how do we prepare the way? The first way is from the message of repentance, the clarion call to repentance. That is what the voice of revival is all about. This is not a ministry that is based upon fame, the accolades of man. This ministry is based upon a command for the Lord's word to go forth as a forerunner, just like John the Baptist. John the Baptist came preaching the message that Isaiah had prophesied, prepare the way, prepare. When we prepare, what do we do? We're taking action. We're clearing away. We're taking the time to prepare. That word prepare means to mend the nets. To mend the nets. You see, that's a fisherman's term. To mend the nets. How can you prepare for a catch if your nets are not mended, if they're not together? As I was preparing for this program, I began to do a lot of research. I began to do a lot of study and I began to bombard the scriptures. And I also began to look at some resources that I could find on repentance. What really got me was that there wasn't much on repentance from today's generation. In other words, from today's preaching, the message of repentance, it's seldom heard. It's hardly talked about. It's hardly preached on and it's hardly taught. The word revival has lost its meaning because we live in a society that is excited about when we talk about revival. Oh, my goodness. We're going to have revival, an evangelistic crusade. We're going to have a revival one week meeting at church and we're going to get people saved. No, revival is more than that. Revival is a lifestyle. Revival is a way of life. Revival is you bringing life everywhere you go. You are a revival. You see, we're waiting for a movement to come. No, you are the revival. You are to be a movement. You see, God is looking for movers. God is looking for those that would make history. Frank Bartman, the intercessor and journalist of the Azusa Street Revival, said, The depth of your repentance will determine the height of your revival. The greatest need of this generation is that the church will make a wholehearted return to the purpose of God. And what is that purpose? Repentance. What is that purpose? Revival. What is that purpose? You see, revival is just the beginning. Revival is not the end result. Revival gets the sequence going. It gets the ball rolling. I think it was this week I was in prayer and I just began to feel that the Spirit of the Lord was telling me that I was getting so far into revival. I was already running after awakening. I was already running after the moves of God. And he said, you haven't prepared for it. He says, that's what you're doing. You're preparing my people for this great awakening through the voice of revival, through the message, the clarion call. The clarion call is the sound, the bugle, the alert. It's the trumpet, the call, the trumpet call to the people of God. And that's repentance. And he brought me back to this time that I was in prayer. I believe it was October 3rd, 2015 at 8 a.m. in the morning. And this was a day that I was wrestling with some financial issues that were pressing me. I was getting very depressed. I was weary and stressed out. I was speaking very negatively. And I had to repent that morning to cast it all off in order to get into prayer. But the Lord began to reassure me that he would take care of me in the way the prophets were taken care of like the way Elijah was. It was in that time that the Lord began to tell me that we are the watchers of the souls of men. We're responsible for seeking the face of God on behalf of man. So that morning as I was repenting, and I had just fasted about a day or so, but then all of a sudden a deep travail, I began to weep. It was just uncontrollable. The burden of the Lord came upon me and I couldn't control the anguish, the tears that were flowing. And I cried to the Lord, what do I do? It was so intense. I didn't know what to do with it. Then I heard the Lord and this is what he said. He said, this is how I feel because my people have rejected me. My heart is in deep mourning, weeping and intercession for their souls. My watchmen are not just to shout and blow the trumpet with anger, but their actions and words 
words must be bathed in tears of repentance. I wailed like someone who does in a funeral, and I laid myself prostrate before the Lord, and I began to weep bitterly. The presence of the Lord held me up, and it was so intense. Even though I was a man of prayer, it wasn't until that morning that the spirit of repentance, the burden of prayer, came upon me. Now I understood why the prophets wept and why the church has forsaken the meaning of revival. Revival is fasting, weeping, and mourning that leads to repentance. The reason why we're not truly repenting is because we cannot humble ourselves. We're not praying. We're not seeking God's face. We're not turning from our wicked ways. There's a call going out to come back to true repentance. Revival has been used and abused because we think it's all about supernatural encounters. And this is part of what I wrote. It says, there's a call that's going out to come back to true repentance. Revival has been used and abused because we think it's all about supernatural encounters, joy and laughter, praising and shouting, dancing. But that doesn't sustain revival. The only way revival is sustained is through prayer, fasting and God's word. When fasting and prayer join together, there's a power that was released that gets the ear of God Almighty. Prayer is good, but fasting takes it to a whole new level. We want to thank you for listening to the Voice of Revival radio show. You can find out more about us at voiceofrevival.org about this ministry. Stay tuned for our next broadcast as we continue the second part of Preparing the Way for Awakening. We'll continue on this broadcast. You can listen to us on YouTube. You can go to the VOR Network on YouTube. You can also like us on Facebook. And we have some other things that are going to be coming out in the future. May the Lord bless you and continue to keep believing for a great awakening. This is Isaac from the Voice of Revival Radio. God bless you and we'll see you again in our next broadcast. Hi, my name is Isaac Gutierrez. On our site, you will find resources to equip the body of Christ on revival for today's generation. We created this website to equip churches, pastors, leaders, ministers of the gospel around the world with powerful resources to prepare the church for a global awakening. At the Voice of Revival website, you can download our free media tools, listen to our program, subscribe to us on iTunes. You can download free ebooks, PDFs, study and teaching materials, listen to archives of the great revivalist messages and preaching. You can also find links to revival ministries, watch a variety of videos on revival history, the great awakenings, watch powerful documentaries, and also find us on our Facebook page. To find out more, go to the Voice of Revival.org. That's the Voice of Revival.org website. This concludes the Voice of Revival broadcast for today. Tune in again next time and hear more biblical truths for today's generation. To find out more about this ministry, visit us online at voiceofrevival.org. That's voiceofrevival.org.